When you first receive your HuddleCam HD Pro IP webcam, read through the included quick start guide. This quick start guide is also available for download at huddlecamhd.com slash resource dash library. When you first open the box, you will find the camera, a quick start guide, a power supply, an IR remote control, and two AAA batteries. Start by opening the back of your IR remote control and insert your AAA batteries. Next, you can plug your camera into the network. Note, this camera can be powered with a PoE power over ethernet capable network switch, PoE injector, or using the included power supply. It is not advisable to use more than one power source at the same time. If you are unsure if the network switch you are connecting to provides power, simply plug it into the network to test. If your camera turns on and you see the ethernet lights blinking, you do not need to use the included power supply. Next, you can mount your camera to a tripod or a wall mount. If you're using a tripod, use the quarter 20 connection port at the bottom of the camera to securely fasten the camera down. Or alternatively, you can use the monitor clamp to securely attach the camera to any monitor or LCD display. Once your camera is connected to the network and set up in an ideal location, it's time to find your camera on the network. You can download the HuddleCam HD Pro IP camera IP address settings tool at huddlecamhd.com slash downloads. The camera ships with the default static IP address of 192.168.100.99. You can set this camera to DHCP or a different static IP address with the IP address settings tool available at huddlecamhd.com slash downloads. You can open the IP address settings tool by clicking the upgrade.exe file on Windows or the upgrade icon on a Mac. Click the search button to find your camera. The default IP address is 192.168.100.99. Right click the camera in the list and select config. Here, you can set the camera to a static IP address of your choice or choose DHCP if desired. Note, if you are assigning a new static IP, do not forget to also assign a new default gateway. For example, if you set your camera to IP address 192.168.111.21, also change the gateway to 192.168.111.1. The gateway address is determined by your network's configuration. Note, if you do not know the IP range of your local area network, you can reference the IP address shown in the search tab of the IP address settings tool. Find your computer's IP address in this list and use that IP address to determine the IP range of your network. It's now time to start to use your camera with a video conferencing, production, or recording software application. Start by downloading the latest version of NDI tools for your Mac or PC computer, available at ndi.tv. This set of tools is constantly being improved and new tools are being added all the time. NDI Studio Monitor is a tool you can use for remotely reviewing and controlling the EPTZ camera. NDI Virtual Input is a tool you can use to connect your NDI camera to any software that uses a webcam for video, audio, or more, such as Google Hangouts, GoToMeeting, Skype, or Zoom. Note, some NDI tools are only available on Windows. Please check ndi.tv for the latest list of tools available for Mac, PC, and Linux-based computers. There are hundreds of applications that support NDI video integrations natively. Once you have the latest NDI tools installed on your computer, open the NDI Studio Monitor application. Assuming that your computer and camera are on the same local area network, the application should automatically find any NDI sources 
currently available on your network. Right click the application and select Huddle Cam HD Camera. On the right hand side of NDI Studio Monitor, you will see controls for digital pan, tilt, and zoom. Go ahead and make sure you have remote EPTZ camera controls. Note, the camera will not offer any pan and tilt capabilities until you have first zoomed in. You can now use the included IR remote control to control your camera. You can use the slow or fast zoom in and out buttons on your IR remote control to zoom the camera in and out at different speeds. Once the camera has zoomed in, you can pan and tilt using the up, down, left, right direction pad buttons. You can set an EPTZ preset by moving to a specific location and pressing the preset button on the IR remote control and then choosing a number to save that unique preset to. You can recall this preset by simply pressing the number you have chosen. In this way, you can set up multiple EPTZ camera presets and recall them with your IR remote control or the HuddleCam HD software. Next, you can familiarize yourself with the on-screen display menu. It is here where you can reach all of the fine-tuned settings that your camera was capable of. You can use the OSD menu by pressing the menu button on your IR remote. Here you can adjust exposure settings to fine-tune shutter speed, aperture, gain, and digital range controls. Next, you can adjust color settings. One useful white balancing mode is the one push feature you can use to quickly have the camera calculate your room's white balance. If you happen to know the color temperature of the lighting in your space, you can use the VAR mode to select a color temperature for your camera's white balancing between 2500 Kelvin and 8000. You can also fine tune your camera's image settings, the sharpness, and even flip the image vertically or horizontally. The settings area is where you can fine tune your camera's EPTZ and auto framing settings. By default, EPTZ is set to on, and the zoom limit is 1 to 3x. Check out the chart below to see the resolutions you will be working with at various EPTZ zoom levels. You have the following options for limiting the EPTZ zoom limits, 1 to 3x, 1 to 4x, 1 to 8x, 2 to 4x, 2 to 8x, and 3 to 8x. Depending on your project, you may want to limit the zoom ranges to maintain specific video resolutions from your camera. You can always set your camera back to default settings using the IR remote shortcut star pound 6. More useful IR shortcuts can be found on the second page of the camera's datasheet. Auto framing for the camera is set to off by default. In the settings area of the OSD menu, you can turn this feature on. When you are first setting up this camera for auto framing, use the demo mode so that you can see the logic the camera is using to automatically frame your subjects. During demo mode, you will see red boxes around objects that it considers a face. This is easy way to quickly see the faces the camera detects in the room for auto framing. Best practices for setting up a camera using auto framing include make sure your participants are in a well-lit area, use a solid background behind participants to improve performance, and subjects should sit within a sufficient distance from the camera. We recommend a minimum distance of 2.3 feet or 0.7 meters. If you are all ready to turn on auto framing, you can do so in the settings area of the OSD menu. Finally, consider downloading the browser-based IP camera control panels that you can customize with a little HTML knowledge. You could actually use these control panels to add PTZ camera controls directly into OBS or any web browser. You can download the tools at huddlecamhd.com downloads. Once you unzip the folder and put them onto your computer, you can open them with any web browser. Using OBS, for example, you can copy and paste the URL of these files into the OBS Docs feature. To do this, click View, 
docs and the custom browser docs. This is where you can name your doc and enter the URL. Once you have done this, you can drag and drop your doc into multiple locations into the OBS interface. You can click the settings option to enter your camera's IP address and take control of your camera. If you have any issues during the setup process of your HuddleCam HD EPTZ camera, please contact support at the phone number listed on the HuddleCam HD website or submit a ticket at help.huddlecamhd.com.